Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to the Primary Sabbath School class, where today we are going to talk about a beautiful house. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day that you have given us. Be with us during our lesson study today. Help us to walk away knowing that you love and care about us and that you will always dwell in our midst. In your son's name we do pray, amen. A beautiful house. Our memory verse is coming from Psalms 84 verse one, and it reads, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. Almighty. Before we go into our lesson for this week, I want us to listen to a song entitled, This is God's House. It's a beautiful song that reminds us that God wants to be with us. And while he can be with us anywhere and everywhere, he wanted a special dwelling place for us and each and every Sabbath, he invites us to that special dwelling place, that beautiful house that we know as our church. The way we worship in our church shows reverence for God. The way we worship in our church also shows respect for the building itself. So let's listen to this song, This Is God's House and let it be a reminder of our response to God's willingness and openness to dwell in a place with us. Bring all your burdens, bring all your fears, you won't be rejected, he welcomes you here. Enter with passion, enter with praise, walk through the doorway of grace. His sanctuary, this is where we come to seek his grace. Yeah. 
This is God's house. Amen. Psalms 84 verse 1. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. King Solomon sent for a servant. It's time to begin building God's house, he announced when the man arrived. I've given a lot of thought to this great project, and now I'm ready to start. All the Israelites knew about this wonderful plan. King David, Solomon's father, had wanted to build a special house for God. But God had told him no, that it would be a job for his son, the next king. Now, King David was dead and Solomon had been king of Israel for four years. And he was finally ready to begin building the temple. Send a letter to Hiram, the king of Tyre, Solomon said. He began to say what he wanted to write to Hiram. You were a great friend to my father, David, Solomon began. He was not able to build a temple to honor the Lord as he wanted to. Now I am planning to do it. Please cut tall cedar trees from your mountains. I will send men to help you and your servants with the work, and I will pay you whatever you ask. King Hiram was pleased to receive Solomon's letter. He sent back word that he would indeed provide lumber for the temple. He also promised to send Huram Abi, a great artist, to help Solomon's workers. Huramabi knew how to work with gold and silver and bronze and wood. He knew all about stonework and carpentry and weaving and dyeing beautiful fabrics. It took thousands of people to work on the huge temple. King Solomon sent 30,000 men to King Hiram to help cut down trees and bring them home. And guess what, boys and girls? 80,000 other men went to the hills to cut stone. They quarried the beautiful stone out of the mountainsides and shaped them into building blocks. They made the blocks to fit so perfectly that when they were taken to build the temple, they fit together like the pieces of a puzzle. There was no sound of hammers or axes or any iron tools at the building site. This was one way the workers showed reverence for the Lord. Solomon's temple was probably the most beautiful building ever built on the earth at the time. On the inside, the stone walls were completely covered with wood. The wood was decorated with carvings of angels and palm trees and flowers. Then it was completely covered with gold. And guess what, boys and girls? Even the floor and the ceiling were covered in gold. Artists carved two great angels from olive wood. They overlaid the angels with gold too. The angels were put in the most holy place where the ark of God would rest and their lovely wings stretched across the whole room. All the furniture of the temple was beautiful and carefully made. King Solomon and all the Israelites wanted to honor the Lord in every way. Who can really build the Lord a worthy home? Sol Solomon asked. Not even the highest heavens can contain him. Boys and girls, building and taking care of a church are acts of worship for us just as much as they were for Solomon when he built his beautiful temple. And the things we do inside, the things we say inside our church are also acts of worship. They show our reverence and our respect for God too. And our message for this lesson is, 
I worship God when I show respect and reverence for his house. Amen. Our church is God's house. It's his place to worship with us, to dwell with us. It's a place where we can bring all of our cares and our fears to him. It's a very special place. And because of that, we should show respect and reverence for his house, our church. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day and we thank you for the reminder that our church is your house. It's a very special place for us to spend time with you, for us to worship, for us to um, grow closer to you. So I pray that we may remember those things that we've learned in this lesson and remember to show respect and reverence for your house. Please be with us as we worship and serve you on this beautiful Sabbath day. In your son's name, we do pray. Amen. All right, boys and girls, keep growing, keep loving, keep serving. And remember to worship and respect and reverence God in his house, our church. Until next time, goodbye.